this is Bruce Friedman of Adult Site Broker, and welcome to Adult Site Broker Talk, where each week we interview one of the movers and shakers of the adult industry, and we give you a tip on buying and selling websites. This week we'll be speaking with dominatrix and hypnotist, Mistress Carol. Adult Site Broker is proud to announce the launch of our new website, Adult Site Broker 3.0, at adultsitebroker.com. The look and feel of the new site is nice and up-to-date and easier to navigate. The new site also has links to our affiliate program, ASB Cash, and our new blog. Speaking of ASB Cash, we've doubled our affiliate payouts. Now when you refer sellers or buyers to us at Adult Site Broker, you're going to receive 20% of our broker commission on any and all sales that result from that referral for life. You can either place a link to us on your site or refer buyers and sellers through an email introduction. ASB Cash is the first affiliate program for an adult website brokerage. Check out ASBCash.com for more details and to sign up. Now let's feature our property the week that's for sale at Adult Site Broker. We're proud to offer for sale a streaming network of sites for independent performers. Most of the traffic comes from North America. It's the Shopify of streaming video and offers turnkey streaming sites to content creators. All creators have to do is provide some information about their brand, choose a look and feel, upload their images and videos, and they launch their streaming site on the domain of their choice in just minutes. The platform provides everything creators need from customer support to payment processing so creators can focus on managing their content and marketing their site. The platform can also generate revenue from ads on free content as well as subscriptions to premium content. The platform uses AWS cloud technology to stream live and on-demand content all around the world. The sale also includes a mainstream platform. The content is sold on a monthly subscription basis. The code was developed in-house by their team of engineers. This is a great opportunity to enter the exciting world of live streaming video for a modest cost. Platforms like this cost a lot more to build from scratch. Only $540,000. Now time for this week's interview. My guest today on Adult Site Broker Talk is Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll, thanks for being with us today on Adult Site Broker Talk. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, Mr. Scarroll is a dominatrix, erotic hypnotist, and clinical hypnotherapist. I'm going to try not to screw that up at erotichypnosisformen.com. She is an expert at controlling your mind and taking you deep into the sensual experience of hypnotic trance and fantasy. Her sessions have been celebrated as some of the best in the industry with her provocative and controlling voice that welcomes one to surrender into hypnotic submission. With an intellectual interest in psychology and the mysteries of the subconscious mind, Mr. Carroll has been practicing hypnosis and creating erotic trance sessions for over 10 years. As a sensualist, she takes pleasure in creating a dreamlike environment where one may be immersed in fantasy, lost inside her control, and sexually dominated as she blows your mind. She thrives on pain and pleasure, domination and submission, control and surrender, plus passion and desire. With a bit of a mischievous streak and a playful manner, Mistress Carol enjoys the dynamics of tease and denial, taking you to the edge of agony and lust, then leaving you aching for more. Professionally, Mistress Carol is also a clinical hypnotherapist and works with the community, supporting individuals with overcoming issues and habits so they may create their best lives. She's helped many to overcome anxiety, stop smoking, lose weight, and conquer their own personal limitations. Mr. Scarroll is the creator of erotichypnosisformen.com, a lair of wicked enchantment and depravity, which features a captivating variety of recorded erotic hypnosis sessions available for online purchase. Mr. Scarroll also offers live online sessions for one-on-one trance experiences and distance training on many sexually inspiring topics. You may also find her older discounted sessions at My Hypnotic Domains, or visit her at loyalfans.com forward slash Mistress Carol, where you can enjoy her subscriber-only VIP content. And we've got a treat on the podcast today. Mistress Carol is going to do a few minutes of trance with us, so it should be interesting. Mistress Carol, what's involved 
yeah, my uh, I'm losing my voice here. What's involved you make it sound great. in er- <laughs> what's involved in erotic hypnosis? Well, before I talk about erotic hypnosis, I'd like to touch on what hypnosis is. Hypnosis okay. is an altered state of mind in which you focus your awareness on the speaker. Um, you experience decreased awareness of the things around you. Um, you become relaxed and right. suggestible. So okay. that is hypnosis in a nutshell. And of course, everybody knows that hypnosis is good for all sorts of things that ail you. Mm-hmm. And so is erotic hypnosis for <laughs> that <laughs> matter of fact. In erotic another way, yes. Yeah. <laughs> erotic hypnosis is hypnosis with a sexual component. Um, there are many different genres. Uh, of course, I'm a dominatrix. I'm a mistress. So mm-hmm. I use that point of view in my recordings. Although okay. I'm a, a clinical hypnotherapist too. So I, I also make uh, recordings that are helpful to people to relax or shed anxiety. Mm-hmm. Or just to feel good. Just to, to have a time out. Mm-hmm. Great. So hypnosis is hypnosis with a sexual component to it. Okay. okay. So how did you get started with erotic hypnosis? I actually got started in BDSM first. I met my partner over 20 years ago and Mm -hmm. had moved on to a different type of life, met him, and he shared his desires of exploring BDSM. And I Mm. thought, yeah, it sounds like a good time. (laughs) So we experimented, we tried switch, uh, which we would go back and forth. And I said, no, that's not working. Me, Dom, <laughs> you sub. So after ooh, about 10 years of our experimentation in 2008, I lost my job in my former life. I was a uh, commercial construction project manager. Yeah, we were talking and about course, that. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything. Can I curse? <laughs> Everything went to shit. Uh, mm-hmm. For everybody. For everybody. So I lost my job and it took two years of unemployment before I found another one. But before I did find that job, my partner turned me on to erotic hypnosis and let me listen to a couple of sessions by some excellent artists. And I went, whoa, that ticks a couple of boxes for me. Domination, mm-hmm. psychology, control, all sorts of things. Yeah. So I wanted to experiment and I used a rudimentary microphone and created a session for him. And he hmm. went in and listened to it and came back out with red eyes and said, that's as good as anything I've heard on the internet. Light wow. bulb. So I decided, okay, this is fun. I'm going to start my own business creating erotic hypnosis recordings. And at mm-hmm. the same time that I did that, I did that in the November of 2010 and then By the beginning of the next year, I was employed. Hmm. So for quite some time, I did both at the same time. So I have to credit my discovery of erotic hypnosis was through my partner. That's awesome. That is, that is really, that is really awesome. It it Um, is awesome when you find something that really clicks with you in many different ways. How uh, has the uh, onset of the fan sites helped you sell those sessions? Well, you know, I avoided them for quite some time, and I just now recently have joined Loyal Fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how well they cross over just yet because Mm -hmm. I'm new to Loyal Fans. Right. But it's nice to have somewhere else to expose your work and to find new people. Mm -hmm. So it's a good mix. Um, But I still don't know whether or not ultimately one is helping the other. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, any place that you can market uh, is is certainly a good thing. And there are a lot of outlets for that. So I would encourage you to certainly put the content on as many sites as possible. I would think something like Clips for Sale, which tends to be more much of my cash. What's that? I don't like to give up my money. They take a little bit too much of my cash. Well, that's not that's not a good thing. Okay, <laughs> very good. Um, so, so what do you enjoy about erotic hypnosis? There's many dis- different aspects of it. I enjoy. I enjoy the creativity. So I get to uh, think about 
how I want to hypnotize somebody, what methods, what genre, Do, is mm-hmm. it BDSM, is it bondage, is it just deep trance? I have many different topics to choose from. So I sit down and write my script, record it, and produce it. And it's, it's very it's very creative. Mm-hmm. And it feeds my dominant side while subs get to enjoy it too. Can you hypnotize me to rob a bank for you? Do you want to rob a bank? No. Then no. Unfortunately, well, <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> actually, this isn't something you wanted anybody to have control over. Um, you, hypnosis cannot make you do something you would not do out of hypnosis. Hmm. So you don't want to rob a bank. You would not do it for me if I hypnotized you. TV hmm. shows a different picture, and that's fun for entertainment. Mm-hmm. But I would imagine if anybody had that capacity, hypnosis would shoot soon become a thing of the past. Yeah, that would suck. The kind of power and control over somebody else's mind. Yeah. What do you think it is? The government or something? (laughs) (laughs) Spoken by someone who used to work for the state of California, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was the job I got back in in 2010. Mm -hmm. Five years of hell. Yeah, we touched on a few things in our casual conversation. And you... You, you happened to mention that, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, it was horrid. It really was. But you do what you have to do, knowing that better things are around the corner. Yeah, and they obviously were. They were. I'm having so much fun now. I work for myself, and that yeah. is a wonderful thing. I can do things in my own time frame. Yeah. So talk about the the line of work you had before you became a hypnotist. I was in commercial construction Mm -hmm. and I was the project manager. So my tools were a computer and a telephone and a car. And I did mostly tenant improvements, although I did do a large shopping center down in San Jose Mm -hmm. um, and ran the construction projects from estimating to project closeout. Everything about it belonged to me. And I was really good at it too. And I enjoyed Mm -hmm. it. I wouldn't have left it voluntarily to do this. So getting that nasty job with the state pushed me in a great direction. Hmm. But yeah, I I was uh, in construction for over 25 years. I didn't do management the whole 25 years. I did management for about 15 years. You couldn't pick a more different line of work than what you're doing now. Well, think about it. I'm still telling men what to do. (laughs) That's funny. It kind of fits together a little bit. So what about that? You know, you mentioned telling men what to do. What about that is appealing to you? Oh, I'm a dominatrix. Mm -hmm. I like to to be in control of situations. I like to play with the minds of others Mm -hmm. and open them up and show them what they can experience psychologically through the use of hypnosis and altered states. Mm -hmm. And take them down into deep trance Mm -hmm. and the subconscious mind is such a powerful thing. And they, through images and suggestibility, they experience these things. I can some, not all because suggestibility is different in everyone, but there are people that I can take down into trance and suggest to them to have a hands-free orgasm. And that's Mm -hmm. precisely what they do without even touching themselves through the use of words alone. Seriously. Seriously. That is the power of the conscious mind. That is right. Not everybody can do it. That's crazy. And those those who can't are really disappointed, but a lot of people can. Wow. Yeah. You're a lifestyle dominatrix. You you mentioned that your your partner got you into it. Um, Yes. But what, what really drew you to the lifestyle? I think it was an opportunity to let a side of my personality that I hadn't played with before out to experiment. Mm -hmm. And the more I did it, the more I enjoyed it, the better I got back around in that circle. The more I did it, the better I got, the more he enjoyed it, the more I enjoyed it. And it just growed, growed. (laughs) It just grew. A new word. (laughs) Yeah. It just grew into a very pleasurable, intimate sexual relationship. Hmm. 
and I can take the things that I've learned as a dominatrix and I can mm. take them and use them in my recordings also. Sure. So I've done recordings um, using chloroform for forced tox lovers. Mm. I've done nipple piercing. Mm -hmm. I've done the use of smoke. Mm. But all of those things aren't very mainstream. Yeah. And the situations that work best for most of my clients are just relinquishing control to me for a period of time and being mm. taken away mm. where they have no responsibility and they can enjoy the pleasure of surrendering to a dominant mistress. Is it hard to get them to relinquish control? Well, it depends on the individual. That's why I don't keep anything back. If it's very difficult for you and you don't like giving up control to another, my hypnosis is probably not for you. If you enjoy it and you mm -hmm. still don't feel like you're a submissive, well, you're a submissive for the time that I have you in trance, and then you go mm -hmm. on your merry way. But if you're really opposed to it, it's probably not going to be something you're comfortable with. Yeah. And it's very important to establish a sense of trust and mm -hmm. rapport yeah. for someone to be able to go that deep into trance. I would think. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want to be surrendering your subconscious mind to just anyone. That would, you could be dangerous. Yeah. Now, you also do live sessions, right? I do. In fact, I just finished one uh, before you and I got together. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. my internet dropped. But that's okay. He and I got back together and I said, I want you to sleep. And he was back down, down deep into hypnosis with just one simple word. Jeez. He's very that suggestible. Is, that's powerful. Very suggestible. And that's so much fun. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is really fun. I get to have all the fun. <clears throat> well, they have fun, too. I can tell you enjoy what you do. I really do. I really do. So what but do you I, like? I, I, Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, but I really like hypnotherapy too. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a firewall in between both practices. They don't meet yeah. in the middle. It's one or the other. Right. Of course. Of course. Now, what do you like doing with your play partners the most? My personal play partners? Yeah. Oh, I'm a big lover of nipple playing. Mm -hmm. Uh, pegging, forced intox. Uh, my partner's got a smoke fetish, which feeds both of us. I'm not a, a daily smoker by any means, but playing with him is a lot of fun bondage. Um, he's not into CBT, so we just don't go there. Sorry, what's CBT? Uh, cock and ball torture. Ah, I wouldn't be either. <laughs> yeah, as your boss, right? Make me hurt just thinking about it. Yeah, but we use a lot of hypnosis in our relationship now, whether it's going on to something physical afterwards. Mm -hmm. I typically start with a recording. I set him up with a recording and we have a unit that I can talk through while he's mm -hmm. listening to a recording so I can enhance it for whatever I have planned for him, which is pretty slick. <laughs> so I can use recordings I make for others and just enhance them and make him listen to them. But he loves hypnosis, so it's easy for both of us. Great. Have you ever had anything unusual happen during a BDSM session? <laughs> she laughs. Oh, gosh. Back when I was a baby dom and we were both experimenting, there was a couple of fantasies that he had that I tried to fulfill. I did fulfill them, but mm -hmm. on my side, it was a little rocky. He mm. wanted to have his nipples pierced. Mm -hmm. And I hate needles, <laughs> but I love him. So way back when I decided I'm going to do this, got all the supplies ready to go. He was really good about it. Held still. I did it. I suffered through it with him <laughs> and ended up piercing both his nipples. A few weeks later, they healed up. Hmm. I had to do it again. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I did it. Second time was easier than the first. Still difficult, but easier than the first. So when I see some of those photographs posted on the internet of elaborate needle patterns, I mm -hmm. have to admire them, and then I have to look away because it's just not my thing. Yeah, um, a lot of people, 
Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of people are squeamish about that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's either you love it or hate it, I guess. It's just never been something. I would have been a, I would have been a great drug addict, probably. <laughs> I'm, I'm like when I go to get a blood test, I'm like looking right at right at, at her and looking at my Give arm. Give it going, to me, babe. Going, go it for me. it, go for it. And then I, uh, uh, I'll say I'll say things like "ow," you know, just to to mess her up. Anyway. <laughs> and another incident we had. Another, he's mm-hmm. a forced intox guy. He wanted mm-hmm. to try chloroform, and I can't tell you how I got my hands on it. <laughs> um, but I did. And the first time I used it on him, he started speaking in tongues and I just about Whoa. came undone. I thought, my God, I've killed him. What have I done to him? And it was just <laughs> a reaction of the first time he'd ever been chloroformed, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought I killed him. I like, I'm never doing this again. Oh God. But that wasn't the case. So the, yeah, those are the two things that really stand out in my mind as I was working my way through learning BDSM, becoming more confident in my skills Hmm. and uh, getting good at what I do. I mean, there's some tears, some anchor, Hmm. but now the adventures are a lot of fun. And I get to, like I said before, cross over from the playroom Mm -hmm. to the studio and take some of my knowledge and create hypnosis for those that are into such things. I wouldn't recommend anyone who would be offended by the use of chloroform to listen to any of my sessions. I had Hmm. one of my subs contact me yesterday saying how much he hated it. I thought, well, why did you buy it? It says right Mm -hmm. there, chloroform. But Mm -hmm. if it's something that offends your mind, you are not going to be able to stay in trance. You will come out. If If you're a forced intox lover, you probably will enjoy the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're opposed to that sort of thing, you'll come directly out of trance. That's how the subconscious mind works. It'll pop you right out. If it's something that your subconscious mind determines is a danger to you or Mm -hmm. does not fit within your belief system, Mm -hmm. your mind will pull you right out of trance. That whole chloroform instance must have been really a shock to your system. It was. It was petrifying. He was fine. He didn't care. But Mm -hmm. it, it really did scare me a lot. So you have to be careful with such things, oh, you know yeah. what you're doing. Absolutely. Now, you're also a hypnotherapist. Now, what exactly does that entail? In my hypnotherapy practice, I use techniques that help people to get rid of certain things within their minds, such as anxiety. Hypnotherapy is absolutely brilliant for anxiety. Mm-hmm. I've had a couple of clients who had debilitating anxiety and hypnotherapy got rid of it and Mm. they lead happy, normal lives. Um, The subconscious mind is where all of your beliefs are stored, your habits. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a 24 seven recording device, basically. So everything Mm -hmm. that you've experienced in life is in there, whether or not you can remember it, it still affects your behaviors. Mm -hmm. So people have hypnotherapy to get rid of, those behaviors. Right. And there are certain blocks and obstacles that you've got in there that hypnotherapy lets you remove Mm -hmm. so that they can change the behaviors, whether it's being anxious or a repeating habit that you want to get rid of smoking, losing weight, Mm -hmm. something personal, personal issue. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to get into the subconscious mind without chemicals (laughs) Mm. So you don't have to go to the doctor and take medication to get rid of your anxiety. So if there are people Mm. out there listening to this podcast, you're anxious, you're on the edge, you think you want to go and get some help medically. Yeah. Try try hypnotherapy first. Yeah. You know, I've had with anxiety, I've had a hundred percent track record. So give it a try before you go and get a pharmaceutical. Yeah, because doctors are so quick to prescribe things. Oh, yeah. That's how the big pharma makes their money, and doctors are yep. part of that shtick. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, did you uh, did you read that book um, about uh, Purdue Pharma? I did not. Oh, God, it's uh, – I forget the name of it, but I it, it, was, a, it was like 600 pages. But it's uh, basically how Purdue Pharma got over on the entire world – 
by, you know, the, I mean, there was virtually no accountability. The money they ended up being fine, they could have taken out of their back pocket. So, oh. you know, they were the ones See, who, the, who sp- sparked the whole opioid crisis. Oh, God, that is just horrible. I'm glad I mm-hmm. haven't read it. I would find that extremely disturbing. It's It was disturbing, but it was very interesting. It started with the beginning, uh, the founder of Purdue Pharma. They were also the ones that started advertising meds. Oh. Yeah. They were the first. Uh, the guy mm. that uh, was the founder of Purdue Pharma was an advertising guy. Oh, great. Oh, it's it's yeah. a fascinating read. It is just a fascinating read. Um, I, I I couldn't believe it, but yeah, I mean that's that's what doctors want to do. They want to prescribe meds. Yes, everybody makes some money. Absolutely. And, but you know, I've taken medication before where one uh, disrupted my system, so they gave me another for that disruption, and then there yeah. was another disruption when I should have never had it in the first place. And I think that yeah. happens to a lot of people too. Yeah. So. I'm an advocate so, for the natural stuff. So with hypnosis, let's say I want to lose weight, which I do want to lose weight. How does hypnosis help me lose weight? Well, just like uh, erotic hypnosis, the, mm-hmm. they're different because in erotic hypnosis, you can use a lot of language that you can't in hypnotherapy. Mm-hmm. But I put you in basically a trance where you become deeply relaxed mm-hmm. and you slip from your conscious mind into your subconscious mind. Okay. So the patterns of why you overeat or what you do to yourself are stored there. So I am your guide. I just show you how to find them. Mm -hmm. You find them, you remove them, which allows you to make the changes that you want to make. Hmm. So you, you could have had something when you were three years old that your parents said to you that created an issue in your subconscious mind Hmm. that, causes you to overeat Mm -hmm. you just you just don't know because you pick up everything so you don't know where it came from Mm -hmm. you just know that you have this behavior that you want to change and consciously you're aware that you want to change that behavior right but your subconscious mind comes in there say you're smoking oh i love Mm -hmm. cigarettes i love it when we can go outside and have quiet time and just have a cigarette your conscious mind is saying i gotta quit Mm -hmm. your subconscious mind is saying oh we don't we feel good when we smoke it's so hypnotherapy. It sounds like it sounds like Animal House with <laughs> sounds, the, with the devil. Like and, <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like Animal House where he's got the where he's got the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other <laughs> shoulder. Remember that? It's kind of like that uh, in a a little more complex way. But mm-hmm. hypnotherapy helps the subconscious mind and the conscious mind to quit fighting and just get along. So mm-hmm. it helps you to get into your own mind, right, and help you make those changes that you want to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, the techniques that I can use, I can even work with somebody who's had trauma. Mm-hmm. I don't have to know what that trauma is because in really? traditional therapy, what do you do? You talk about the trauma. So yeah. you, you just make it a fresh wound. But with hypnotherapy, mm-hmm. there are techniques that you can use to get in there and remove the things that just don't work, replace them with good positive things, get out the, boot out the negative, put in the positive and uh, get back to living your good life. Does it make them forget the trauma or does it just kind of no. wipe clean what the trauma did? No, it just helps you to rise above it and beyond it. No, I don't think hypnotherapy, although I, I can, I, in erotic hypnosis, I can hypnotize somebody so deeply they don't remember what I did or what I said. But with hypnotherapy, you're, you're more aware of what you are doing and where you mm-hmm. are. So unfortunately, it's, it doesn't wipe clear any past trauma, but it certainly helps you get over it. Yeah. Very interesting. So when you aren't hypnotizing people, what do you like to do? Oh, what do I like to do? No, I asked you. I like, (laughs) (laughs) I am an avid fisherwoman. I don't know Mm. if fisherwoman is, I think it's fisherman is the correct term. I love to deep sea fish. I absolutely love to fish. Hmm. I fish in lakes and rivers, but my thing is getting on a boat in a boat on the ocean. Not seasick much, out. are you? <laughs> I have never gotten seasick. No, I've been out in Bodega Bay and you know what that's like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never got sick. I was right. one of two people who didn't get sick on a trip <clears throat> once that we went out there. So I'm very fortunate since I love to fish so much. Mm. Um, and I like to do things outside hiking mm-hmm. and uh, 
exploring. Mm-hmm. But right so, now, my yeah. hypno my hypno life is quite busy, so I don't yeah. get the opportunity to get out as much as I would like. It sounds like you live in a great part of the world to do all that. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. I'm really blessed. I'm very fortunate. I live in a wonderful place. Yeah. And uh, I enjoy it very much. Except for the fires. Except for the fires. I could do without that. <clears throat> yeah. Take a sip couldn't, of tea, clear the smoke all. from my lungs. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so what are your future goals? Well, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing with the creativity of erotic hypnosis recordings. And I love working with clients online. Um, but at some point in time in my future, I don't know exactly when that time frame would be, I'd like to create lessons to teach mistresses the art of trancing their subjects. Mm-hmm. I really get turned on working with a pro dom. Mm-hmm. So she's got a sub. I hypnotize that guy. I put all sorts of stuff into his mind and she gets to play with it. Triggers. And trigger is just a clue as to a reaction that's been put into your subconscious mind, like a snap of my fingers. So I just really enjoy the aspect of teaching others, other doms, how to use hypnosis in their personal sessions with their clients. So I, at some point in time before I leave the profession, I'm going to, to put something like that together, pass on the knowledge that I've gained through the years. Sounds, sounds like a great idea. It it's one of those things that really turns me on. In fact, I've got a client next week. Um, of course, I will be there virtually, but it will be a twosome with his uh, real, for lack of a better term, real life Dom. He'll be there in person hmm. and then I'll be Skyping in. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to it too. Yeah. Kind of a threesome. It, it is a threesome. <laughs> so you, so you do work both in person and online. I do when I can, I've done in person work when I've been in England in London, but hmm. I live rurally. So Mm -hmm. there's no place close by that I can do live sessions. I'm not opposed to live sessions at all. They're Mm -hmm. a great deal of fun. Right. Um, But it's two and a half hours to the bay. Yeah. And that's just too far. It would be far too expensive for anybody to be able to to do that anyway. Yeah, they'd have to pay for your travel time. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a full day. And I wouldn't be a very happy camper. That drive doesn't make me happy either. That drive makes me really crabby. I don't have to do that anymore. I did in my past life. I don't now. Yeah. Makes but sense. it's easy enough just to connect with people mm-hmm. online. Yes. Because after three or four minutes, your eyes are going to be closed and you're going to be knocked out shortly thereafter. You're going to be in deep trance. So why pay all of the extra money for me to come to you and hypnotize you? When it's a whole lot less expensive and easier for both of us if we just do it online. By the way, is it harder to get somebody under on, you know, virtually as opposed to in person? Not at all. No, it really isn't. I like to see my hypnotherapy clients live because I can perceive things that are going on with them by being in the room Mm -hmm. with them. Right. And I think I kind of have that sixth sense a little bit with online clients too. But mm-hmm. as long as I'm able to watch them and watch mm-hmm. how they react, right? I can, you know, just twist and bob, weave, hmm. punch, do the things I need to do, mm-hmm. you know, just watching their face. So now it's, it's easy enough to do. So where does one find you? Well, as you said in your most eloquent introduction, Thank you, Dominique uh, yeah. Dahl. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm going to steal it. Thank you. Uh, I have several websites. Um, my primary website is erotichypnosisformen.com. Now, that mm-hmm. one's new. It's only been active for about a year. Yeah. Um, my other site is myhypnoticdomain.com, and that's where I put all of my older recordings. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all $9.95. There you go. So if people, anybody wants to go experiment, there's some free sessions there too. So if you've got a curiosity about erotic hypnosis, but you're not ready to spend any money, there's many resources that you can go to. 
Most erotic hypnotists have free sessions so that you can try them. Of course, we want to hook you and get you back to buy more or to have online sessions. Yep. Um, and then I have a fan site, which I just started not too long ago. Fan sites are a lot of work hmm. at loyalfans.com right. forward slash Mistress Carol. I also have a website, mistresscarol.com, mm-hmm. but it is severely neglected. Hmm. Um, and I just, I want to keep it active because I'll, that's where I keep all my chloroform recordings because mm-hmm. credit cards don't oh. like forced in talks. And there's, oh, only, there's, there's oh, only I one bet. place. To, I mean, you can't even clips for sale, night flirt, none of those places right. will let you do a chloroform recording, which can oh. be a whole lot of fun for those who like them. Yeah, so mistresscarol.com is yeah, where you how, find that that's sort how, of that's thing. That's how credit card companies are. They're yes. very, very tight with that stuff. And it's very difficult for hypnotists in that world. Luckily, we still have sure. a few resources. Um, but you've got to be really careful with what you offer mm-hmm. and how you go about your approach. Right. You want to keep your credit card processing companies happy. So I'm very, very careful with what I do and yeah. I stay within their guidelines because I would like to keep this up. What, what advice would you have for someone who wants to get into erotic hypnosis? Well, as a listener, I would say, figure out what it is you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's lots of resources on the internet. All you have to do is Google it. Many, many mm-hmm. good content creators and just go have some fun and, and go shopping and look around and try different things out. Um, you want to, use reputable content creators because as i said earlier it is your subconscious mind right and that's not something you want to share with just anybody right you can't use hypnosis to make you do what you don't want to do but if your line is blurred maybe you'll open your wallet where you didn't want to open your wallet Mm -hmm. and as far as those who would like to create hypnosis yes there are a lot of good books on amazon there's a lot of good books on hypnotherapy, which is also a good resource. Once hmm. you learn how to hypnotize, then you can take your skills and modify them and sure. learn the sexual side of it too. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a blast to play with your partner. Mm-hmm. Learning hypnosis and adding it to the things that you do intimately mm-hmm. is a lot of fun. Yeah. Doesn't hypnosis itself take some schooling? It does, but... It's not something that you would think would take a lot of schooling because there are a lot of resources on the internet that you can go to and learn the basics. Mm. What is an induction? What is Mm -hmm. a deepener? What is the, basically the guts of your session and Mm -hmm. the wakener and learn different types of each of those and Mm -hmm. try them out on people. Right. Gain confidence, learn Mm -hmm. more, gain more confidence, learn more. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon you're setting up a shop on the internet. Wow. Like somebody I know. <laughs> so what do you want others to know about erotic hypnosis? Erotic hypnosis can allow you to experience things that you might not be able to experience live mm-hmm. due to finances, uh, mm-hmm. inhibitions. Maybe you've got a fetish or mm-hmm. something, a fantasy role play that you really like to try. Uh, there's a couple of things I'm just not into, like mm-hmm. ABDL, the, the, the adult baby stuff I'm not into, or FinDom. There are a lot of people out there doing a lot of different things that might connect with you. You need mm-hmm. to establish that rapport and trust that I spoke of earlier so that you do drift off into trance, which is mm-hmm. just an altered state. Right. And allow yourself to let go and enjoy the experience. Because once you're in your subconscious mind, mm. it opens things to let you see and feel and experience on a totally unique level. Mm-hmm. So I can push buttons mentally and create physical sensations in you. But that's just because you're allowing those things to happen. You want them to happen. Therefore, it is happening. Okay. So the time has come that we've all been waiting for, Mr. Scarrell. You're going to do a few minutes of trance with myself and our audience, so take it away. All right. Well, here, you know, have some music. Music okay? Sure. Uh, have you ever been hypnotized before? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Did, how did it go? Yeah. 
just my did was that too loud no it's fine all right here's a little music with a little binaural beats in it to help you to drift off into trance and a little metronome so no i can't hear it you can't hear the music no really this damn thing how's that yeah now i hear it okay good all right when you're ready to be hypnotized just allow your eyes to close and i want you to take a big deep breath as you breathe in i want you to think about breathing in some calm energy and as you breathe out releasing any stress or tension that you might be holding within you as i spoke earlier hypnosis is increased relaxation focused attention on the speaker decreased awareness of everything around you and increased suggestibility so with most newcomers i like to do a progressive relaxation induction and what that is is that i'm going to mention various parts of your body and it's like my voice is relaxing energy that just seeps into those spaces creating a deep sense of relaxation as your mind begins to clear and empty just focusing on the sound of my voice just enjoying how it feels to become deeply relaxed now i want you to think about the top of your head just the top and just let my voice seep on in creating a sense of deepening relaxation just on the top as it begins to spread down your head down into your temples and your forehead your nose your cheek your chins your chins <laughs> your chin allowing your head to become very deeply relaxed flowing down into the muscles of your neck your neck has to hold up your heavy head all day long just let it relax that's it down into your shoulders that have to do all that heavy lifting all the time just let them become loose melty as it flows down into the big muscles of your arms flowing down your arms into your elbows your forearms your wrists your hands let's gently fly out the tips of your fingers now think about those melty shoulders again as that wonderful feeling just flows down into your upper back your chest mid back and stomach down into your hips mm, it feels so good to relax like this to just let go to just become loose and limp all over down into the big muscles of your legs knees shins and calves ankles as you let that wonderful sense of deep relaxation just flow out the tips of your toes now your entire body becoming deeply relaxed as your mind slows down on its way to becoming clear and quiet focused on my voice listening to my voice each word i say to you now creating a deeper sense of relaxation and quietness inside of you in fact when i say the word deeper it's like a just presses a button inside of your mind that sweeps everything away from it as your body continues to relax more deeply deeply relaxed drifting deeper and deeper it feels so good to let it all go it feels so good to become this deeply relaxed as you just listen to the sound of my voice nothing else you have to do just listen breathe and relax Drift even deeper for me now i'm going to count you down down into trance and it feels so good to be there because you'll be even more deeply relaxed i'm going to count from 5 down to 0 and when i say 0 you know you will be in a wonderful state of hypnosis a warm soft gentle trance feeling so good 5 relax more deeply with me now let go let go of everything and just enjoy becoming so deeply relaxed listening to my voice nothing else you have to do for drifting deeper and deeper feeling god because the deeper you fall the better you feel and you're feeling really good now let go more drift down with me now 3 mm, each number taking you deeper down and it feels so good to so just surrender to it 
to just follow me, follow my voice down, deeper and deeper down, so relaxed, carefree and empty, mind quiet, to even deeper now, good, just like that, even deeper now, one, feel so good to let it all go, and in just a moment, I'm going to say the number zero and snap my fingers and say sleep, and you'll drift into trance, and right afterward, I'll wake you again, as I say zero, and sleep. That's it. That's all there is. Drifting down, enjoying how it feels to just float on my voice. Nothing but my voice. Feels good to be quiet, empty, nothing to do, nothing to think about. And in just a moment, I'm going to bring you out of trance. I'm going to count to three, from one to three. And when I say three, you'll come back out feeling refreshed, comfortable and calm, relaxed, curious about hypnosis, wanting to learn more. Ready? One, two, three, all the way out now. Waking, waking, getting your mind back, feeling deeply relaxed, comfortable and calm, feeling good. Hi, Bruce. Hello. <laughs> so that's that you had to do it quickly um but that's a little yeah. a little introduction into that's cool hypnosis itself and yeah. of course depending whether you're going to the right side hypnotherapy left side erotic hypnosis there's many different techniques that you can use mm -hmm. in different situations and sometimes like today when i was working with a client i combined them but i've worked with him mm. before that way but i don't yeah. typically do that with with people uh like i right. said i i keep a, a wall between the two yeah yeah oh, let me try man, I'm, man i'm relaxed <laughs> are you good my, my like I, my head just kind of kept dropping and everything so yeah yes, this way I, I always recommend either lying down or if you're in a chair a chair that's high enough in the back so you can at least lean your head back yeah i probably should have done that i probably should have yeah, done that it's a deep trance it could give you a neck ache um next my time client today he <laughs> uses an airplane pillow which yeah. is a great idea to keep your head yeah. from flopping around exactly because you don't want that to bring you out of trance no nah, exactly exactly that was awesome oh i'm well, glad you enjoyed it yeah mr scarrell i'd like to thank you for being our guest today on adult site broker talk and i hope we'll oh, have a chance to do this welcome. again soon oh i hope so my broker tip today is part five of what to do to make your site more valuable for when you decide to sell it later Last week, we talked about new ways to monetize your site. Next, eliminate unneeded expenses. Constantly make sure you're not spending money you don't need to. Make sure there isn't duplication in your staffing. From time to time, check services you pay for, like hosting, and see if there are better and less expensive options. Take it from me, I've done this and saved a bunch, plus got higher quality hosting in the process. Again, you can ask us for recommendations. Always look for ways to do things more cost-effectively. Along with this, make your profit and loss statements show more profit. Increasing sales and reducing expenses obviously does just that. Make sure your P&L statement accurately reflects your company's actual costs, not a bunch of personal expenses you put in. This will cost you money when you sell. It may help you with the tax man to put that stuff on your tax return, but it hurts you if you show that stuff on your profit and loss statement. Remember, every dollar in profit increases the value of your website as much as three to four times. This is why you need a good experienced broker to help lead you through the process. We've gotten people thousands of dollars more on their sale just by adjusting the P&L statement to reflect actual business expenses as opposed to a bunch of BS. We'll talk about this subject more next week. And next week we'll be speaking with Brian Sloan of Autoblow. And that's it for this week's Adult Site Broker Talk. I'd once again like to thank my guest, Mistress Carol. Talk to you again next week on Adult Site Broker Talk. I'm Bruce Friedman.